All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. We have, well, we have a lot to look forward to uh, this morning. We're looking forward to this service uh, for a number of reasons. And the first one is to dedicate a baby. But before we get to that, a few words uh, that I'd like to say. Jesus had said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for to them belong the kingdom of heaven. It's never too early for us to pray for our kids and to do what we can in order to point them to Christ. And I know that Julian and Laura um, have been doing that with their children. And we had the privilege of dedicating uh, Sophia. And today, um, we're going to be dedicating Leonardo Alexander Santos. But right before I call you up, um, I was thinking this week about this one another mini-series that we've been going through as a church, as a church body. We've been talking about since we are in the kingdom of God, since we are a church family, how are we supposed to interact with one another, treat one another? And so we've been looking at some of the commands in the New Testament of how the church is to, to live out um, our lives as kingdom citizens in the church. And so we've been talking about the, the command to love one another, to love is to cherish, to value, and to work for each other's best interests. And we've been walking through some examples of what that looks like, like bearing one another's burdens and serving one another and encouraging and exhorting one another and confessing our sins to one another and being hospitable to one another and comforting one another and being devoted to one another. Um, and we've been, we've been walking through that. And I hope that this mini-series has been encouraging to you, um, perhaps convicting in ways that you know that you can walk as, um, as a member of our church family. But as I was thinking about that, I was thinking about um, dedicating our children to the kind of community, to the kind of family. Jack, you'll need to turn off airplane mode. <laughs> In order to dedicate our family, we have to turn off airplane mode. <laughs> okay, I turned airplane mode off. Please stop. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I thought airplane mode meant it didn't make any noises. Um, anyway, so. I turned airplane mode off. <laughs> Anyways, so leading up to this week, I was thinking about that's, this is the kind of community, the kind of church that walks in the, the commands we've been talking about um, that we want our children to be raised in, to experience um, as they grow up. And so just grateful for our church and that we've already been, been walking these commands and, and living it out, um, which has been really encouraging to me. So I would love to call up uh, the Santos family, Julian and Laura Santos, and we are going to be dedicating Leonardo Alexander Santos this morning. So come on up. Hello, hello. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey, buddy. Okay. So... They are dedicating Leonardo um, to the Lord. And more than that, they are dedicating themselves, Julian and Laura are, to raising up Leonardo uh, in the Lord. And we as a church are dedicating ourselves to support the Santos family. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you, um, I'm going to give you three charges. And after each one, if you agree with it, just simply say, we do. Okay? So here are the three charges. The first one is that knowing that all of life is from God, including the life of your son, do you recognize the sacred duty entrusted to you to raise Leonardo? Do you commit anew your lives to faithfully love and serve our Savior, recognizing and obeying the scripture to regularly pray, to be in God's word, and to gather for mutual support and fellowship with the people of God? And then lastly, do you commit to raise Leonardo to love and to serve God and people, and when he's able to understand, to instruct him in the way of salvation through Christ? Okay. So to the church, to our church family, um, as a community of believers, we, we each have a part to play. Some of us, we're going to be praying for the family. We're going to be praying for Leonardo. Some of us are going to be downstairs volunteering in Terra Kids to teach and to show God's patience and care uh, for Leonardo. Some of us are in their tribe, including myself, uh, where we walk together with the Santos family 
um, and support them and are devoted to them. So we each have a part to, to play as the family of God. So what I'd like for you to do uh, would be to stand, please. And if you agree with, with the charge that we give to the church, please say, we do, after I read it to you. So, as a congregation loves, supports, and shares life with one another, Terra Nova, will you support the Santos family in raising Leonardo and so fulfill the law of Christ? Thank you. You may be seated. Appreciate it. All right. And as... Um, the pastor of his family, I'm going to ask if Julian would please pray um, for Leonardo and for his family. Thank you. Dear God, I first want to thank you for our healthy, extremely well-nourished baby boy. Leo, you already make us laugh so much and your joyfulness and smile are contagious, and you're trying to eat the mic right now. I know. I know, buddy. We named you Leonardo, which means strong as a lion, and so far, you are living up to that name. I pray that as you grow, you continue to draw people to you, and that people look to you as a leader. I pray, though, for the inner strength you will need to hold true to the values we as a family and a community hold most dear. When your own strength runs out, as it inevitably will, I pray that your foundation in Jesus is all the more stronger. Lord, I pray that you help us foster a desire in Leo to know you and that you give us wisdom in our daily words and our actions on what it means to be a Christ follower. I thank you for this church full of people that I love that pick us up when we stumble or fall. I pray that you find a place and a church to call your home and that one day your mother and I Thank you. Your mother and I uh, will sit to watch you dedicate your family. Your mother and I love you so much, Leo. Thank you, God, for the gift that he is, and we dedicate him to you now with hearts full of joy and hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. So, I would like to introduce the service to you to let you know. Today looks a little different, uh, so I'm going to tell you what, what we're going to be doing. So, as you know, last week was the last of our one another commands that we're looking at through the New Testament, and today uh, the idea was for people to send in examples of how we've already been seeing, we've already been living out um, a lot of these commands. So in your own experience, how have you seen people love each other, encourage each other, exhort each other, and throughout the different commands that we've walked through? As of last week, if you remember, we had a total, a grand total, of one video sent in. And as of three days ago, 38. So love that. <laughs> uh, yep. So thank you for sending those in. The reality is, what, there's tens of thousands of more that we could have sent in. Uh, just in this past week, I have seen multiple examples of one another's um, lived out in our church. And so, thank you for sending those in. I want to tell, I want to, we had a new problem of now that we have too many videos, what do we do? And so what we did is we asked those of you who sent in more than one to choose one. Good problem to have. And what I would like to tell you now is when you, if you send in more than one and you cut, you cut one of them, and sent, the other, and sent the one that we're going to see today, please still send that video that you made privately to the person or to the family that you talked about. Please do that. And then secondly, if you'd like to see all of the videos that were sent in, we're going to put the whole collection on our YouTube channel. So check out the Terra Nova Church uh, YouTube channel uh, to see those. So here's what it's going to look like today. We broke down all the videos into three Thank you, categories. <laughs> um, so what we're gonna do is, we're first gonna watch um, videos that have to do with examples of comforting, encouraging, and exhorting one another. So we're gonna see the collection of videos that have to do with that, and then we're gonna call up one of, our, uh, one of the pastor's wives to come up and to pray over our church uh, in regards to those commands. Then we're gonna sing a song. That's, 
act number one. Then, this, then we're gonna look at the second collection of videos that have to do with loving one another, being hospitable to one another, and serving one another. We're gonna see those videos. We're gonna call up another one of the pastor's wives. We let them know beforehand, just in case you're wondering, uh, to come up and to pray over our church. And then we're gonna sing another song. And then we're gonna look at the collection of videos having to do with confessing our sins to one another, bearing one another's burdens, and being devoted to one another. We're gonna watch that collection of videos. Pastor's wife's gonna come up and pray. Um, and then we're going to sing another song. And then after that, we're going to have communion, a few more songs, and then we'll wrap it up uh, with a few words. So that's what today's going to look like. And we're looking forward to seeing these, these examples and praying together. And so let's start with the collection of videos um, of examples that we've seen of comforting, encouraging, and exhorting one another. <laughs> Hi, my name is Laura Santos, and today I wanted to talk about the command to comfort one another. The specific people that came to mind for me were two women in my tribe, Becky Summer and Casey Waite. Um, a couple summers ago, I was grieving a loss, and they came and they delivered a care package to my door of a bunch of different goodies and treats, um, and it just really was a sweet gesture, and I knew that they cared was very comforting to me. Hi, my name is Carl Adams and I wanted to give an example on the command to comfort one another. At a time when I had brought something upon myself and it was veritably appropriate to retreat, I want to say that Pastor Tori and Melissa Walkup instead drew near and comforted me in that time and I really appreciated that. Hi, my name is Alicia and I wanted to share a way that I see our church uh, exhibit the one another's. I see our church encourage one another in the tribe setting, uh, specifically in my tribe, one of the Troy tribes. I recently saw examples of our tribe members allowing themselves to be vulnerable in their encouragement. They took the time to provide, provide encouragement um, to each other on a particularly hard day for someone and then further encourage them by sharing something that that person does well that emulates Jesus. A couple weeks ago, I got in pretty well over my head with a little project in my house. It was kind of a do-it-yourself plumbing adventure. And I was stressing about it, didn't know what to do. And um, one of the guys in my tribe gave me some practical help and some uh, really good suggestions and and the, the moral support that I needed uh, to know that I could get through it and figure it out. And um, I did, and it's all working well now, so thank you. And uh, to me, that's a good example of encouraging one another and uh, bearing one another's burdens. Thanks. My ladies tribe led by Candace has been a really good example of encourage one another. Whenever somebody shares, everybody else in the group is really quick to say, hey, thank you for sharing that, or me too, or that really resonates with me. And for the person who's sharing, that creates just a beautiful space of validation and celebrates what God is doing in that person's life. So thank you ladies for being so encouraging. Hi there, uh, my name is Melissa. Um, I've been going to Tara for two, almost three years now. Um, and when I was thinking about all the one another's, it was really difficult to narrow it down to just one um, experience or like one time that I saw um, somebody, you know, portray one of the one another's to me. Um, so a time that I can think about um, that is one of the most meaningful was back when I first came to Tara. Um, I met Summer Jennings and I remember thinking she was so cool and fashionable um, and I just wanted to be her friend. Um, and she was wearing these white boots and I told her that I liked them, but oh, I could never pull those off. And she accepted the compliment, um, but very quickly said, of course you can, like you can pull off anything you want, you know, with confidence. Um, and it just, changed the way I thought about things. Um, you know, I was a stranger to her. I wasn't her friend. I wasn't anybody special. And she still took the time to encourage me. And even now when I go shopping for clothes or shoes, I, I think about that, um, what Summer said. And um, as someone who 
uh, can be very self-critical, it just meant a whole lot um, to be encouraged in that way, especially by somebody that was a stranger um, and somebody that I kind of looked up to in that way. So, love you, Summer. Hi, this is Sharon Shaughnessy, and um, this is an example of encouraging one another. There was a time when I was really discouraged about um, basically a parenting situation. I was discouraged about my kids and um, Steve Jewin, who is, is no longer in our church because he just moved away, but he told me, hey, when you're, you're climbing a mountain, do you just give up if it, when it's hard? Um, and when you, you think that you're, you're coming to the top and it just goes on and on, do you, do you stop before you come to the top? And I love that example because uh, Steve Juman is not a hiker, but he knew that that analogy would speak to me. And I think that points out something that's really important about um, both encouraging and exhorting and comforting one another is that you, you know the person that you're speaking to well enough to know um, what that what's going to speak to them and I think Jesus is the best example of that. Okay, <laughs> this is terrifying. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna pray about this. <laughs> Dear Lord, um, I'm so thankful for you and so thankful for all the ways that you've shown us you in this church. Um, you're the God who comforts and encourages and exhorts. Um, and we've seen you do that through all of us um, in these videos. And I want to thank you Thank you for these videos because these are all instances where you've comforted us and encouraged us and potentially exhorted us to. And it's how you've shown us that you're listening and that you care and that you love us. Um, so thank you for being there, um, being here for us. Thank you for just all the opportunities through the people around us that we can see you and feel you. Um, dear Lord, I pray that you give us your spirit um, and urge, urge us to keep doing this and keep loving each other and encouraging each other, that we don't miss opportunities. Opportunities for others to see you through us. Um, and I pray that I pray that you continue to urge us to read your word and know you so that when we speak to others, they hear your words through us and they feel your love through us. So many people in this church have experienced a lot of painful experiences um, and needed encouragement, needed comfort, comforting. And I pray that we can be there for them, but also be there for people who aren't in our church and people that we don't know yet. Um, our country is experiencing so much division, so much pain. Just in the last week, um, with Roe v. Wade being overturned, We want to rejoice, but also mourn. <laughs> because people, are, their hearts are breaking. They don't see a future. They see pain. <laughs> they see hopelessness. And God, I pray that we can be there for those people. And step up. And love them too. And Lord, I know you love all of those babies, but you love the women too. And I pray that you give us the strength and the courage to love first and not judge. And stand by these people and help them. But 
but speak truth and grace always. And give us your words, God, because ours are not going to suffice. I thank you for this church that's already doing so much to help people and organizations around the world that are doing so much, and I pray that we support those and help them. And that we don't feel crushed or bear the whole weight of all of this, but put it on you, God, because you're, you're standing next to us. Just like Tori's standing next to me, you're here with us, encouraging us and loving us. And I pray that we can do that for other people. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Okay, it just seems like a very fitting time. It wasn't planned for today, but we, we are going to, in the next multiple years, be supporting, partnering with, helping um, an organization called Compass Care. And so I'm not gonna give the whole, all of what they, what they do and how we can contribute and all of that, but they're, they're called Compass Care because they, they want to show women who feel as if there's no way forward, there's no direction other than abortion. They try to provide opportunities for them, they're able to share the gospel with them, and they have seen through their efforts in some of the hub cities in New York, like Syracuse, Rochester, Buffalo, abortion cut in half over five years in all three of those places, and they moved to the capital region, and we want to encourage, support them, and over the next multiple years, um, see many women given the opportunity and the way forward through support, through families that are willing to take them in to provide, to help out. And so we have a lot to celebrate um, with lives being, being, being saved, um, from this decision, and also, as Anna was saying, the chance to, to step in and to also grieve and sympathize with those that are hurting and don't see a way forward, and to pray and to be part of something moving forward that gives direction. And so, more information of that to come, but I thought it was a good time. Check out Compass Care, just do a Google search, uh, give them a look, and more on that to come in the coming days. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle Palmer. I'm a member here at Terra Nova. Uh, one example of hospitality is when I first got to know Tori. I met him in an event that was part of something that my mom signed on to do that he and along with other members of Terra decided to do. Not knowing who I was as a person, Tori welcomed me into his group of friends that he was with. I later found out he was a member of Terra Nova, actually a pastor there, surprisingly. and. He invited me into a picture with them and actually invited me to attend the church that Sunday, which I did. You know, I sort of had a falling out with it. I didn't think it was right for me, but anytime I would come back, I was always welcomed with open arms by him and everybody else in the church with hospitality and a great sense of love that I came back to see them. When I first came to Terra four years ago, I was brand new to the area and didn't know anyone. But when people like Daniel Lewis started inviting me into their homes, it created opportunities for me to begin establishing meaningful relationships with brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm grateful to God for Daniel's hospitality and for his participation in building up the body of Christ. Hey Tara, we're the Hodsons. Our parents show us hospitality every week by having us over for Sunday dinner. There's always an open seat at the table, so please come join us. All right, hi, I'm Adam Mello. I wanted to give a shout out for, for hospitality, specifically Ryan and Alicia Fitzgerald. Uh, for the last six years that I've lived here, I've always seen them opening up their house and giving away their time and efforts to people around them. They're always wanting to coordinate get-togethers and spend time with people and open up uh, what they have. So I just wanna give a shout out to what I see there and say thanks to them. Hi, my name is Sarah Schaefer, and the one other command I want to talk about is to be hospitable to one another. Um, as Natalie had mentioned in one of her, um, one of other videos, is that I currently live in New Hampshire, and I have been so overwhelmingly welcomed by the community whenever I come back into town with 
many people offering up their homes to me as options to stay in. And I want to talk about four women in particular, uh, Natalie Sakatano, Melissa Walkup, Jariah Bankson, and Summer Jennings. Those four women in particular have consistently and frequently opened up their homes to me uh, whenever I come into town, not only housing me, but feeding me and providing me anything I could possibly need in those visits. So, just want to say thank you. Hi everyone, this is my one another, and in particular to serve one another. Um, I had a leaky pipe in my house that I tried to fix and I made it far, far worse. So I reached out to the guys on my tribe and within like an hour, Rob Anderson was over at my house with his torches helping me fix the pipe. He left work early to come help me and it was a, com a completely unexpected blessing and uh, really made my day and uh, was just a great example of, uh, yeah, people serving one another. So, thanks. Hi, I wanted to talk about the command to serve one another and the first people, couple, uh, that came to mind were the Frugios. And uh, honestly, when I asked to come up with a specific example for how they serve each other or um, others, I couldn't think of something because I just feel like that is just such a huge part of their life and I see them doing it so often, whether it's in church, in different ways of volunteering and serving um, in different parts of um, service or um, just even in their day-to-day -day with, with friends um, and giving their time and their, their love and even when I know that their tank is empty so um, I'm just really really grateful for them and, and I just when I think of serving one another I really Hey Terra family, when I think of a good example of serving one another, the, uh, our tribe comes to mind. Because there was a time when Caitlin and I had COVID and Chris and Becky, Summer, uh, they fed us, they brought us a meal and then we also had our own pastor and Anna, his wife, come and bring us some groceries to help us through the time. So that was an awesome way, a tangible way of seeing how we can serve one another. Hi, I'm Ryan Fitzgerald, and I wanted to share a way that I've seen members of our church serving one another. Recently, my wife Alicia and I were visiting our friends Kate and Blake Philippi, who just had a baby, and we were super encouraged to see that some other members of our church, Krista and Hannah, had just stopped by to bring them a meal and show them some love. I just want to thank the youth volunteers for spending their time to serve the church and teach us and make youth as fun as it is. Hey y'all, thinking of the Serve One Another in the One Another series, um, and Poema in particular, there's been some women who have just gone above and beyond in service, um, some related to retreat like Jackie Martin and Summer Jennings, Natalie Shekatano, each of who have shared their gifts abundantly with retreat or with other aspects of Poema. In addition, I think of Allison Caprera, who stepped up to serve and do a Bible study last fall with a group of women and just did an amazing job. Um, I also think of Natalie, who's done worship team for us for Poema, as well as Katie Adams, who's um, played guitar and led worship for us in some informal prayer gatherings, to Laura Fedor, who's taken on the ladies' prayer team and the ladies that are on that prayer team including Renee Gagnon and Kristen Chen and um, Heidi Caprudis and um, other ladies who are so faithful in prayer that way. It's a huge encouragement, but it's really an act of service to take time out of your schedule to do all those things as well. Um, so I just want to say a big thank you to those ladies. It's a huge example to me. Father God, Great is your faithfulness, Lord. You have been so good to us, and we praise you for who you are because you are love. You are a refuge and a strong tower that cannot be shaken. We thank you that you sent your son and have prepared a way for us to have an eternal home with you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for showing us what love looks like. 
what it means to serve to the extent of laying down your life for us. Lord, we humbly praise you. We recognize without the power of your Holy Spirit alive and active in us, we are not capable of loving and serving and welcoming others well. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would rise up in us, empower us to walk worthy of this calling. Be the light in us that welcomes one another in our brokenness, in our needs, in our joys. Lord, by the power of your Spirit in us, would you bond us together today? Would you strengthen the bonds that already exist and create new ones where there's lack? Lord, I pray that none would feel unseen in this place. Father God, would you open our eyes? Forgive our selfishness. Lord, we surrender to you today and ask for your spirit to lead us. Your word tells us in Zephaniah that you are in our midst, mighty, ready to save, that you rejoice over us and calm us by your love, that with joy you sing over us. Father, help us to love in this way, to enter into one another's spaces, to be in their midst. Equip us to be ready to offer help to our brothers and sisters, to fill needs and be a balm to broken hearts and spirits. Lord, help us to be the kind of people who offer peace, who delight in others' successes and mourn with their losses. Lord, would you ignite a joy in this body that comes from loving each other well, from knowing that our sacrifice honors you. Would you convict us today that we would order our lives and our schedules to leave margin for divine interruption, that when others' needs arise, we would be available. And God, would you bless our homes. May they be places of welcome, of peace, of calm, that the world would see the light in the darkness. Would you give us a proper mindset towards hospitality Deepen our desire to lay down our expectations, our fears, our opinions, our comforts, that we would be willing and ready to open our homes and our tables and our arms to one another. Thank you for the examples that we've heard of this life-giving hospitality that is already happening around us. We pray that it would honor you. Spur us on, Lord, to more and forgive us for where we've held back. Jesus, would you bring healing to those who have been hurt or felt rejected? Would you cover them with your grace and your love? Open our eyes to see as you see us. Soften our hearts that you would be glorified in all that we do as a church, that we would be known for our love, for our welcome, May our gracious words be like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body, as your word says. Father, we know that it's in you alone that we find this strength. Would you fill us today? In Jesus' name, amen. So uh, we wanted to talk about confession, and Spencer and I, for a long time, met at 6 a.m. at a Stewart's with a couple other guys to talk about uh, our sin struggles and to hold each other accountable and to pray for each other. It's been over over 10 years, and uh, the great thing about having brothers to walk through life with is you're never alone, uh, even in the darkest moments. Uh, you know that people are praying for you. You know that struggling with you know a set sin a quick phone call or, or asking for a check-in uh, those things came through that I know all of our faiths have, have strengthened and our brotherhood is as well uh, walk, walk with Christ uh, has, has been a great joy uh, in this friendship and even the ugly times. Hi my name is Becca. Um, the one another we're going to talk about is everybody's favorite confessing to one another. Um, so I want to shout out the women in my tribe. I've been a part of my tribe for like six years now. And in that time, they have been a safe space um, to confess to one another in general, but also specifically a place that I've been able to confess sin issues that I've been working through. 
and specific sins um, either to the ladies as a group or to somebody one-on-one -on -one in the tribe um, and I know that it will be met with safety um, and with being encouraged and pointed to Jesus instead of being condemned and Part of my testimony because I felt like it was too much and he would leave and um, and I lied about it when I was asked about it and it took about two months of a lot of praying and knowing that I needed to tell him but really not wanting to um, I was pretty convinced that I would lose him if I told him, like absolutely convinced. And so I asked people their opinions, specifically people that I knew would give me the answer that I wanted instead of the answer I needed. And eventually, while praying, I realized that I was idolizing Tori and idolizing the relationship. And I was so afraid of losing him that I was allowing this to get between and really there was no future for our relationship if I continued to do so. We could never be as close with this between us, and I would always feel this wedge between God and I. And it got to the point where I couldn't keep going like that. And at that point, when I was willing to stop idolizing Tori, um, the Holy Spirit gave me the strength to tell him. And it was one of the hardest things that I've had to do, but I felt so much peace afterwards, even being convinced that he was going to break up with me, and that would be the end. And thankfully that wasn't the end, and he forgave me, even though that was very hard to do. And we are so much stronger because of that. And through that forgiveness, I saw God's forgiveness so clearly, and that's something that I'm never going to forget. So I just wanted to encourage all of you um, to confess. It can be a really great opportunity to see forgiveness um, real time. Um, I think one of the biggest places that I've seen uh, the one another's acted out is really in tribes. Um, you know, I've seen people love on each other, serve each other, share each other's burdens um, regularly um, through tribes. But um, when I was trying to think about something really specific, um, I thought about back when our children were really small and it seemed like just getting to church in the morning was a feat. And um, I, at that time, I just really felt loved and supported and I felt like my burdens were shared with others when I was able to drop off my kids at nursery um, and toddlers or whatever it was called then. Um, and I remember especially just being blown away by some of the young people who were not themselves parents but who um, who gave of their time to be a part of Tara Kids and um, Nursery. And um, I remember specifically meet, meeting Whitney, who was Whitney Gray then, and thinking how cool. Uh, at that time, Whitney was a student and she was just serving not only the children, but also um, the parents who got to go to church. And I remember the feeling of sitting together in church with Brian and it just being such a gift and feeling so um, loved on. Um, and uh, Mark Mullins, who um, I know many of you know, who uh, for years and years served in Terra Kids and so many other people. So thank you, thank you for loving on us. 
Hi everyone, uh, my name is Summer Jennings and I wanted to talk about two women in the church who have been in mentorship roles with me. One of them being Candace Bailey, who is my tribe leader, and another one being my poema mentor, Hannah Bush. Um, I wanted to just shine a light on them um, in the way of loving, being so loving and being encouragers and truly uh, bearing the burdens of another sister in Christ and leading um, me right back into the loving arms of our Lord. I'm thankful to God for Sean Stasek for his sincere concern for me over these last 10 years that I've been in Albany, for his generosity with his possessions, and also, more importantly, just his uh, bearing my burdens in, in difficult times. Again, just overall, just thankful for a, a good friend. I just want to say that the most tangible way that people in this church have borne my burdens is through the children's ministry and the youth ministry. And I just want to say thank you so much for bearing what is probably the heaviest burden that I carry, and that is teaching Jesus to my children and, and pointing them um, to follow him. and. It's awesome to know that there are people throughout this congregation who are reinforcing what I labor over daily and also, you know, having an influence that's, you know, cooler than mom and dad, an influence I can't have for developmental reasons. Um, but I want you to know that your ministry doesn't just enable me to do my ministry without wondering, you know, if my children are getting in trouble. You're also investing in them. and. Um, making them into young men who can contribute to ministry as well. When I think of being devoted to one another, the person that comes to mind is a member of our tribe, Sarah Fies, and she is the member of our tribe who has the most faithfully and most consistently attended throughout every season that our tribe has been through and I can think of no other way to describe it than devoted and her devotion has really blessed this group and particularly blessed our family. The first time I met my tribe we were having a pool party and a barbecue at the Meridians. Little Lyra had just gotten out of the pool and she was soaking wet. She ran up to her dad, jumped in his arms, and got him completely drenched. Steve immediately wrapped his arms around her, warmed her up, and brought her inside. Be devoted. This moment wasn't that challenging. He could easily dry off. But it's little moments like this that make us appreciate the act of being devoted. It can be challenging. And it can be challenging when we are trying to be devoted to our children. And I just want to point out all of the, the dads who I know who volunteer with Terra Kids and the other dads in our congregation that are there and devoted to their children. I think sometimes dad's devotion gets overlooked. So for all the wonderful dads that do everything they can to be devoted to their children, even when it can be challenging, they're in it for the long haul. And that's what being devoted really means and that's what I've learned from the be devoted portion of the one another series I remember when Tammy Meridian came and visited me at the hospital when my mom was dying and it really meant a lot to me that she shows to come and share myself and when Michelle, my dear friend Michelle came and she sat at the bedside and prayed with me for my mom and just assured my mom that she, my friend, loved me and got me like that was so incredibly amazing and so kind. What comes to mind when I think of being devoted to one another would be our deacons and anyone who helps early in the morning with setup, 
backline tear down, taking down of chairs, people like Dennis, Daryl, Preston, Natalie, Jariah, Stephen Breeding, AJ, Rachel, anyone I'm forgetting who runs sound, Kyle, anyone who tears down a cord or pips up a chair after church. That helps more than you know and takes the burden off the shoulders of those who do it every week. Thank you. Hey Tara, I'm super excited that we have been studying the one another passages. God has used them in such a significant way in my life. Um, and I have been so blessed over the last 10 years to meet with three other mamas almost every single week. Um, and these ladies know me super well. <laughs> um, and we pour out our hearts together. Uh, it does require the risk of being transparent and being committed to working through conflict. Um, but we've been able to practice nearly every one of these one another's. And that looks like, you know, bringing saltines when I'm stuck home with my sick kids and texting in the middle of the night and praying when I go on a walk with my non-Christian friend to talk about a really controversial topic. Um, remembering the anniversary of my son's death and crying with me. They know my strengths. They can infuse God's grace and truth into my weakness. Um, and it's just really sweet. So I'm thankful for God's provision. Um, I just want to encourage you to walk and embrace these one another passages um, in new and deeper ways. Would you pray with me? Lord God, we thank you for this community to which you have called us and for teaching us in your word how we can live in this community and build each other up. You've commanded us to love one another, to serve and encourage one another, to comfort and show hospitality to one another. And Lord, you have called us to confess our sins to one another, to bear each other's burdens, and to be devoted to one another. This isn't an easy calling, Lord. Confessing our sins and bearing burdens and being devoted to one another. These things take vulnerability and sacrifice and a willingness to potentially put ourselves in awkward situations. And we confess, Lord, that in our own strength, most of us don't do these things very well. Lord, would you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, give us the ability and the strength and the desire to do these things well? Would you help us to be honest and vulnerable with each other in confession? Would you help us to be strong and steadfast in bearing each other's burdens? And Lord, would you help us to be so faithful in our devotion to one another? Lord, help us to do these things, to live out these one another commands in a way that brings honor and glory to your name, and in a way that strengthens and builds up this body of believers, and in a way that looks remarkably different to those around us and ultimately turns their attention to you. Lord, you used a body of believers who lived these things out well to get my attention and to draw me into a saving relationship with you. Lord, we ask that you would use us, the people of Terra Nova, to do that for others, for the people we work with and go to school with and live next to. Lord, let them know that we are your disciples by the way that we love each other and live out these commands. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, a few words to wrap up the service today. Um, just what a beautiful reality we live in that we have a family of God that is aware of the kinds of lives that God wants us to live, uh, not just for ourselves, not just for our immediate families, but for, for one another and for a watching world to see that, the ways that we care for each other and love one another. And as someone mentioned, I don't remember, I've heard a lot of voices today, I love it, um, how that was initially what drew them in to wanting to know more, to know more about God. Loved hearing about all that. 
though this is the last Sunday in our One Another series, it's not the last day that we're called to live out uh, being members of the kingdom of God and caring for one another in the ways that we've talked about. And there's something very important that I want to say, which is we don't follow, look to, try to do these commands of loving each other and serving each other and exhorting and comforting and all of that. We don't do that because we're trying to become accepted by God and accepted into the family of God. We do it because we are in the family of God. And there's a world of difference. When God rescued the Israelites from Egypt, from slavery, it was after they were set free. It was after he called Moses to go in there and to bring them out. And after they were free, that they were given the covenant, the commands of how to follow him, of how to know him, and how to represent God to the nations, to the watching world. It was after. It's because we've already confessed our sins, believe in Jesus, in the family. You tell your children, these are some of the, the, the laws, the commands. This is the things that we hope and expect to see as you are a member of this family. And it's the same for us who have confessed our sins, believe in Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, because as the song that we sang a little bit ago, here's my life, all of me, take me, Lord. The reality is not one person here can say 100% confidence, that's what I've done with my life, because it's not. We've fallen in so many ways. There's only one person, it's Jesus, who completely devoted and gave his life for God, for the Father. And it's only because of him we have the hiding place that we sang about, a place of refuge to turn to because he lived and died for us. We're in Christ, his perfection given to us. And now he says, go, represent me, take care of each other. You're going to continue to fall short, but continue to look back to him, to the gospel, to the good news. And so we don't follow these commands because we're trying to earn our way into acceptance into the church or with God. It's because we already are. So while the One Another miniseries is done, we continue on. We follow the Lord and we look to obey him with these lives that he's given to us. All up until the day that either he returns or we go home. Have you thought about this one, this one thought? Which of these one another commands that we've worked through, which of these are going to last into eternity? Have you thought about that at all? I did this week. And thinking about what are the ones that we're going to continue to do in heaven when we finally get home? I'll tell you some that we're not going to do. There will be no exhortation in heaven because there will be no sin. There will be no bearing one another's burdens because there will be no burdens to bear. <laughs> there will be no confession because we're not going to sin anymore. It's hard to even fathom that, but that's the reality that Christ has purchased for us and a home that he's prepared for us in heaven. I do believe there will be hospitality to some in a way I don't fully understand. I think there will be. And one that I know will be is love. Paul says, faith, hope, love, the greatest of these is love. We will continue to love one another and the many brothers and sisters, family of God that we haven't met yet and God himself. We come from a God of love. God is love. He made us to know, to love him, to love each other. That's continuing on forever. And do you know what else is going to continue on? Singing to God in collective worship. And so that's what we're going to do in closing out our service today. Sing to our God who redeemed us. I want to give you a little preview for what to expect for the rest of the summer. We are going to do what's called our Summer in the Psalms. So we're going to look at the prayer book of the Bible, and we're going to go through a psalm for, the, for every Sunday throughout the rest of the summer. Next week, you're going to see Paul Gordon, Pastor Paul Gordon from North Adams, Terra Nova, giving us the word. Uh, and then after that, we have our, own, our very own intern, June, June Ha, is going to be giving uh, the message the following week. And so we're going to go through, yep, we're going to go through the psalms, uh, and so we're looking forward to that. So let's continue to worship together in song to our King. <laughs>